Last week, I was in Cleveland, Ohio for the Republican National Convention, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about the people who were there, the people who are actually supporting the Republican Party and Donald Trump. So I went to a number of different events and uh, group locations that were being hosted around Cleveland, and I went to one that was particularly interesting. The event was called Wake Up, hosted by LGB Trump, which, as the name would suggest, is a group of members of the LGBT community who are endorsing Donald Trump. And the event was not just a message to conservative gays, but a message to gays and to the left in general saying that the greatest threat to the gay community is not, you know, people not baking them wedding cakes. It's not, you know, not being allowed to use the washroom of your choosing. It's actually radical Islam. The ideology that is not only summarily executing gays in Middle Eastern countries, but also the ideology that is being imported to people in the West, as we saw in Orlando, and with that execution of gays taking place in North America. So the event had some phenomenal speakers. Geert Wilders was there. Pamela Geller was there. Milo Yiannopoulos was the headliner just, you know, an hour after he had actually been banned from Twitter, but that's a story for another day. And the event was so well attended, it sold out, according to the organizer, in about 24 hours. But not everyone was on board with this idea that the gay community is fighting against radical Islam. No, outside of the event, there was another group, a protest about 20 to 30 strong, called Queers Against Racism. And they were saying, as their little pamphlet that they were handing out to anyone who was interested would suggest, there's nothing fabulous about racism. You can't hide racism and Islamophobia behind gayness. Our grief is not a catalyst for xenophobia. We will not be opportunistically used to promote Trump's rhetoric of hate. What happened in Orlando is a result of a homegrown culture of homophobia promoted by Trump, Pence, and conservatives for decade. And further, only self-hating gays love Trump. So basically accusing every one of those 200 to 300 gays that were at the Wake Up event of being self-loathing. As one of my colleagues, a gay blogger, pointed out, you know, that seems to do more to further stigmatize gay people than anything else, to call them self-hating. And this group that proclaims itself to be the voice against racism and xenophobia had a great deal of white people there in their midst. In fact, no black people, not one single black person, and it didn't look like they had anyone of Middle Eastern descent either. In fact, there was more ethnic and cultural diversity in the attendees at the LGB Trump event than there was in the Queers Against Racism group. But again, I'm not here to point fingers and say, you know, they weren't diverse enough. That's a leftist tactic. I'm here to talk about what the group did do. Also, a leftist tactic. And that was when I was asking them questions, not only ignore me, but physically attack me. Have microphone will travel. That's my motto as a radio guy. So I went up there to the group as they were having some weird sort of dance party and chanting session. And I took my mic and I said, OK, what are you here for? What are you advocating for? I'll play some audio in a moment. I was not confrontational. In fact, I genuinely wanted to listen. But when I found out they weren't actually going to talk, I had to just observe, just walk around, record what I could record. I was not being aggressive. I was not even, oh, I certainly wasn't physically touching anyone, despite what you're about to hear a young lady shriek into the microphone. But what I was trying to do is actually hear what this group did. Now, what happened in the span of a few minutes, I was coughed on, spat on, pushed. I had cigarette smoke blown in my face. And to top it all off, I was attempted to be physically dragged after I was wrapped in a bed sheet, which covered not only my body, but also my face. And these protesters attempt to actually uh, physically remove me from their midst, which they had deemed to be a safe space where they didn't want to actually answer questions outside of what was on their little pamphlet. Well, here's the audio. Over. Come on, guy. Come on. We're going. Buddy. We're going. Um, we gotta it's going to take more than that to move me, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go. Whoa. Y'all can move over there and I can yeah, stand sure. in his way. Sure. I'm sorry, is this, is this a right that you have to actually physically move people? Go. Move. Get out. No, do you have a right to actually move He's people right now? He's not even worth it. He's not even yeah, worth it. No, I'm not. He's not worth it. I mean, I'm not really bothered by this guy. I can kind of pretend he's not here. I'm really used to my gay dance parties being crashed by straight people, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's, like, not a big deal at all. Keep it going, guys. This is good for radio. Oh, it's on the radio that we asked you to leave. <laughs> and you're still here. Wow, it's on the radio that you're harassing us and won't leave. Hey, we're on the radio. Do y'all want to chant? Yeah, let's chant. All right. How about the weird one? Can someone leave that one? We're here! We're queer! Your politics are really weird! Really weird! Really weird! Both hate and Mike, 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 Mike,
I know it's a little bit difficult to picture exactly what's happening without necessarily having the video here, but suffice it to say, when I'm yelling, whoa, 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 and they are on the microphone, on the recording, talking about trying to move me, it stands to reason that, yes, they were actually trying to physically remove me from their midst. Now, this was being witnessed by about so oh, two dozen to 30 police officers. And uh, in the defense of the police officers who were there to make sure the protest didn't get out of hand, I wasn't crying out for help. I didn't actually feel physically endangered, but I could have been. They could have stopped my ability to breathe when they covered my face. They could have hurt me when they were moving me. Now, fortunately, being the weaklings that they were, they did not succeed in moving me, which, uh, of course, in part was due to me having gravity on my side. But the fact of the matter is, right out of the Alinsky playbook, Protesters yell and scream. When push comes to shove, they can't even answer any questions about it. And when they can't answer any questions, let's just try to move the person who's asking them. Well, the message was heard loud and clear that night. There is a bigger threat to the gay community than wedding cakes. And that is radical Islam. And just because this group doesn't want to recognize it, that's a pity upon them more than it is on anyone else. For the Rebel.media, I'm Andrew Lawton. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.